There have been times that I've been laying in bed at 3 a.m. thinking about you know, a shape that I want to make. And eventually I'm like, I just have to get up and do it because I'm not going to fall asleep. I am Rosalie Osborne Knack. In Korea, if you want to learn something, there is a class for it. I did Korean painting, metalworking for making jewelry. I studied ceramics in the Kyeryong Doyecheon, which is the Kyeryong Pottery Village. It's one of the traditional pottery villages that are in the country. While I was there, my pottery teacher suggested that I might want to join the master's program in Gongju for ceramics. There's so much time spent on maintaining the colors, the designs, the patterns, the shapes of Korean traditional art because of the history of ceramics in Korea. There also needs to be unique individual expression. The main thing that I think most people associate with my ceramics is the Skulls and Bones series. It's a combination of Korean traditional techniques of the inlay with celadon glaze, but then also imagery from my home. I am interested in anatomy and kind of fascinated by bones. It's a symbol of death, the skull and the skeleton, but it's a celebration of life. So there are three main techniques that you might use for making ceramics. The first and most enjoyable for me is the wheel. That is how I make most of my ceramics. The second is slab built pottery. The last is hand building. I have teeny tiny little hands and honestly I just don't enjoy hand building very much. So I stick with the first two for the most part. For me, ceramics mostly starts with making the object. Then the real fun happens when it comes time to decorate it. And that involves painting with underglazes, which can come in a variety of colors. And then you can paint it onto the clay in either its greenware or bisqueware form. Greenware is when the clay is still just clay. You make it and you can just throw it back into water and turn it back into clay. This square is when you take some clay and you put it in a fire. Or for me, put it in the kiln. I usually bisque at 800 degrees Celsius, sometimes up to 1010 degrees Celsius. At that point, you're taking clay and turning it into stone. There's no going back. <laughs> you have made a thing. I'm very aware of the fact that I am taking raw earth, raw clay, firing it in my kiln and turning it into stone and making it a permanent object that exists in this world. And if it's not useful, then I have potentially created waste. In the grand scale of things, one cup that nobody uses isn't a big deal, but I don't want to be contributing to the global crisis that our environment is experiencing right now. So when I'm making my own work, when I'm teaching my students, I'm encouraging of myself and others to only keep the things that you really want or keep the things that you really love. Just because you made something doesn't mean you have to fire it. But making a bowl or a cup or a plate, 
that somebody uses every day. If I can make someone's favorite, you know, coffee mug, then that's really valuable to me. That's why a lot of my artwork can hang on the wall. All of my plates have a foot ring that you can hang it on a screw or nail on the wall. But then you can take it off the wall. Wipe it off, put your soup inside, enjoy your dinner. The final stage, whether you've painted on it or you just have the naked clay, is to dip your bisque clay into glaze. Glaze is, in its most basic form, uh, some clay like kaolin, silica, which is, you know, like sand or glass, and water. I glaze fire at 1,250 degrees. And at that temperature, all of those ingredients melt into their glass form. The clay is vitrified, which means it doesn't absorb water. And you have your final piece. So that's, that's the process from start to finish of making a pot. The time from making a piece to seeing the fired piece, on average might be like a month. You need your pieces to be absolutely 100% totally dry before you put it in the kiln, or it will explode. In those moments, I can see why some ceramic artists just make a nice shape, dip it in a beautiful glaze, and they're done. <laughs> you try really hard not to fall in love with something you made because so many things can go wrong. Even in the last firing, something can happen and you never anticipate the joy of seeing your finished work until it is out of the final firing and in your hands and Cats, cats, cats.